Hey, y'all. Hello, welcome to Internet Speaks. No studio, no makeup, no outline, nothing. This is like, you know, when I say the real, the raw, and the inspiring. Well, this is like the downtown. So it's not professional or it's not commercial. <laughs> like, um, I'm coming on to be consistent, um, to be transparent. Um, talk. Right. Um, um, I really don't know how to Okay, don't know what happened, but um, I came on to be consistent. I came on to um, just talk, don't to encourage myself, and then um, hopefully to encourage somebody else. So um, I have moved three times in the last uh, three months. Oh, no, nine months. So I moved. That's what you see in the back. I was getting the last of my stuff. I looked at the clock and it was um, 12 something or one something. And I'm like, do I want to go live today or am I going to allow this to continue to hold me back from what I'm supposed to be doing? And I have decided to make some changes in my life, right? And last year, this time, um, I was making some changes about my career, um, about, you know, then that change brought on for me to move out of where I had been living for the last several years through the pandemic and all of that. So I started a new, right, a fresh um, and then I got mold in the apartment um, that I was living in, and um, I had to transition. In that transition, there was a period in time where I went back to what was familiar and what would be comfortable for me. All the while fighting with myself. Because during the time that I had changed, during the time that I had um, thought about changing my life, um, one thing I wanted to do is get out of the cycle of a toxic relationship, right? And I did that. I did that, and I was successful at it. And then when this situation hit, I went back to the cycle, right? Um, and I realized in that time that I had outgrown that cycle. And then I started to dig deeper in myself because I wanted to be more consistent. Um, I wanted to be more disciplined in areas of my temper, of communication, um, I wanted to to be what I've always seen myself become. I wanted to walk away from arguments. I wanted to to not feel pumped. Uh, I wanted to not feel like um, I was um, how can I say uh Nikki, old me, right? So I've been working on that. Actively, consistently working on me. In this last pivot, that's what we're going to call it, because when you're on a journey, there's a lot of pivots. 
that you go through, right? And on this last pivot, um, it it almost took me out. And I say that to say that um, I can be kind of aloof, right? I've been through a lot, so I can be aloof at times. I can be um, kind of aloof, you know? Something happens, something going down, something between me and somebody else, whoever, friends, whatever. I'm aloof. I don't care. Um, but it comes out in different ways. So I'm coming here to be raw because a lot of times you see the happy, you see, you know, the game face, you see, you know, I'm speaking and I'm encouraging other people because that's what I do, right? Um and, uh, you know, speaking life and prophesying and all of that. Deliverance and all of that, right? But when I'm hurting, nobody can see past that. Like, it's weird. And, um, and it's not like hurting in a way I'm frustrated because I've been actively trying to change and the devil is throwing everything at me. And you and what he is using against me is my own self. He's using my my new me against the old me. And then I'm telling myself, like, all you gotta do is this. Just say this. Just to, and I'm just usually I'm gonna say what I gotta say and I'm gonna leave it alone, right? Um and that's going to be my posture. I'm not going to be around. If I don't think you fooled me, I fooled you, whatever. I'm not I'm not subject, subjecting myself to anything that's going to make me uncomfortable. And I just posted that earlier today. I'm not going to let, but then do, how do we get past the pivot and go back into hitting back the momentum, right? How does the pivot point us to purpose? How? What does that look like? And I'm telling myself all these last this last month, don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't do it. I'm a quitter. I'm a runner. Get hard. I want to run. I don't like say messing with me. I don't like all these little, you know, trials and tribulations. But I, I was um on a training today. And hey, y'all, hey, I was on a training today, and uh, man, that training hit me like a ton of bricks. So with everything that I got going on, trying to write a book, you know, call Arthur in a book, did the Unmuted Movement, shout out to the Unmuted Movement, the transformation is in her voice, shattering God's feelings, um, trying to stay consistent with this, and then I've... um dived into getting my own cleaning business and then you know other stuff and then um working on getting um sharing information so i can be part of primerica getting my life life uh insurance license and it's just been a lot so i was on the training call on the training call there was this uh they played a tape uh like not a tape uh a youtube or whatever right of somebody speaking about their life and how they changed dude said Everybody thinks that positive and negative are opposite. And he said they're not. He said they're best friends. He says, so when you're trying to do something positive in your life, positive goes to negative and say, hey, I need you to call some opposition. I need you to shake some things up because I want, I want this person to really grasp onto what their goal is. And I want them to be able to, their char character to be challenged. So then negative causes a whole bunch of confusion. And in my humanity right now, y'all, I just want to. And I can't. I want to quit. I want to stop going. I want to not feel like this. I want to 
and I feel so by myself. And you know, uh, you have people that, you know, you're not alone, you're not by yourself. That's true. You're not. I'm not. I have people I can call, right? But folks be busy. Right? Am I, am I, people be busy. Don't nobody, and then think when people know what's going on with you, let me tell you this. Don't underestimate the power of how are you. And really, and someone really caring about how you, how are you. Um, because I am good, probably horrible, but good at just, I'm good, I'm fine, I'm good, I'm fine, I'm good, I'm fine. And I've got to stop doing that. Because I'm not good and I'm not fine. And not because of the pivot, more of the fact that I realize who's in my circle, who's in my corner, who is a realization that is like, okay. It's, it's challenging me in a way that I've never been challenged before um, to say to myself, you got to keep going in the midst of being in a pivot. I said that I've moved three times. I'm tired of moving. I haven't gotten evicted, not one time, none of that. I'm just tired of moving. The devil is hitting me with instability. My whole life, I moved and moved and moved and moved. In my adult life, I moved and moved and moved. I want to stop moving. I ask God to help me stop moving. I want to get a house. I want to be stable. I don't want to move no more. Yet I'm moving. And I'm moving again. My car is full of stuff again. It's so frustrating when you can see it, but it's not in your hand. You have to reach. And what's in your reach, right? There's commitment in your reach. There's, there's frustration in your reach. There's, there's wanting to quit in your reach. But we have to get to where we're not. I have to get to where... I'm not quitting, but I also am not allowing things to make me feel this way. I thought I would come on here and like break down crying. I mean, but I didn't <laughs> because I'm not. That's not me. What's in your reach? I've been intentional about making sure that I'm diligent, working, asking questions on my job, right? Getting to know these people's job. Then being trying to be diligent. And sometimes I catch myself drifting. There's a book that I'm going to go get, and it's called Outwitting the Devil. I've got to have that book because without me learning how what this reach is about for for my goals to be in my reach and grasp in my hand i have to do something right so i have to write things down but then i need to know what in the pivot right what is the 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 plan of the enemy to frustrate the plan of god in my life but how what is he using who is he using why do i feel this way why am i why am i dancing with anger again who am i angry with why am i angry with them did they do something to me when is someone going to vindicate me when is someone going to take up to me or not And not. Who's coming to save me? Me? Jesus eventually, right? But who's coming to save me right now in this, pre in this present moment? Who's coming to save me? Who's coming to help me? Who's coming to, to do? Who's coming to my aid? Who's coming to, to me being frustrated? Who's coming? Who? Who? Who's coming? Who, nobody can come hold me at night. People got to go to work. People got to do whatever. So what does that mean? And how do I get to my reach? How do I get my dreams in my reach when everything, there's always a distraction? And I knew it was going to happen because in January, 
I said yes to God in a way that I've never said yes before. I said yes because I don't have a choice anyway. It doesn't matter. So I said yes. Yes, I'll speak. I'll do what you asked me to do. I'll do everything you told me that you wanted me to do on that altar. I will do it. You told me when, where, what time, whatever. I will do it. And when I said that, oh, hell. Literally, hell broke loose. And I have been I have been able to do everything that I need to do and everything God said to do with the grace of God, because God's grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. With the grace of God, I have been able to do pull myself. I ain't had to pull myself out the bed, pull myself out the bed. I'm ready. What? I'm, I've gotten opportunities to speak at places I never would have been able to speak before. I've been doing so much stuff. I'm, I'm excited about my future, excited about where God is taking me, excited, ecstatic about it. But there are the pivots when you, when you don't see, when you don't see me in the studio, when you don't see me dressed up, when you don't see me smiling on the camera, when you don't see, this is like, I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm wrestling. I'm wrestling. I'm wrestling. I don't want to quit. But I don't want to be made to feel uncomfortable anymore. Like my boundaries are being tested. My discipline is being tested. My my anger, my reaction. I need to respond and not react. I don't know. What's in your reach? What, what is required for us to reach? What is required for me to reach? I want, I love my place. God blessed me with a, a, a nice apartment. It's smart. It, it got all kind of gadgets and stuff. It's nice. Nice. Reasonably priced. I have no complaints. None at all. Y'all check on your strong friends, though. Man, please, like. And care about how they doing for real. If you don't care about how a person doing, don't call them. But care about how they doing for real because people don't be okay behind closed doors. Nothing you can do about it. You know, if somebody if somebody asks me if I'm okay, I say yes, thank you. Thank you for asking. I really appreciate you asking. I'm not going to share because I feel like I'm burdening people with my issues, right? So I'm not going to too much try to share a lot of things with you know, with anybody or whatever. And I'm not the pray for me type because I don't really trust people. I don't know if they praying for me or praying on me. I don't know. So I don't ask you pray. Um, <laughs> that's my own thing. But um, check on your strong friends, man. Just it, even if we don't say what's going on, just it's good to be able to say. So and so called to check on me to see how I was doing. You know? Now, if you don't know nothing's going on, then you're not, to, you know, you're not expected, you know, to do that. And then, and then there, you know, then therein lies um, people that feel like they don't want to, or they don't feel like it, or they don't have to, whatever. And that's cool too. I'm saying for you, like those of you that are listening, those of you that see this live, um, I hope I'm just not babbling on and you catching some of this because I'm trying to be strategic and not sit down and break down and cry and blubber in front of y'all like, oh my God. Hey, Dante. I'm talking about pivoting and quitting because I want to quit. So, um, so yeah, I want to quit. I don't want to be uncomfortable. I don't want to be any of that. So anyway, don't let the pivot make you quit. That's what I've been telling myself. This is just a pivot. This won't last long. You know, you throw it off. You know what I'm saying? Um, you you know, you off your game or whatever. 
you know, I have this big thing about the studio and, and what, what it looks like and how can I take it to the next level and how to plan my shows out and all of this stuff. And I've been in a place where I, if, if I was on live, I was totally distracted. They were doing stuff, laughing and talking and doing all kinds of stuff while I was on live. Uh, oh man, y'all like, oh my God, it's been crazy. Enduring as a good soldier. That's a real thing. People say, oh, you know, they call me champ. You know, oh, at my church, affectionately, they call me champ. But uh, I think I'm earning that title. Because every time, okay, um, I go to do something, there's something in my way. There's an obstacle, there's something. It's a lonely, 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 lonely place. When everybody think you got it. And then you know what? I do. <laughs> I do. Which is why nobody don't see how I'm doing. Maybe they feel like, you know, you know, for instance, you know, if I know something is going on with uh, a cousin or, you know, friend or whatever, I'm probably a bugaboo because I'm like, hey, how you doing? You all right? You good? Whatever. They might say, yeah, I'm good. Right? I'm not going to press them. Oh, okay. Well, no, nah, I know you're not good. I'm not going to do that. But there's power in just being able to pick up the phone and say, how are you? I, people so scared these days that you're going to take them out of their comfort and, you know, want them to get out their bed. And I get it. I get it. I don't want to show up either. So I get it. You know, um, you know, they don't want to be disturbed. They don't want to stop doing what they're doing for humanity, for somebody else. I get it. Um, but saying, hey, how you doing? That can get a person through the day, even if it's text. You ain't got to call nobody. I remember one time a friend of mine's birthday, uh, and everybody wished him happy birthday on Facebook. And I called. And I sung like I do. Hey, happy birthday to you. And um, he said, you're the only person that called me. You know, we, we are so out of touch with being human, making mistakes. We expect people to, to, to learn from this and do this and not be this way and blah, blah. And I just, my prayer to God in this changing coming world that we're going to live in, that is going to be the end time, that is going to be horrible, that's that I pray that I am not detached when I am fully and completely healed. My heart is whole and complete and I don't have any holes and I'm not struggling with anger and, and I've, I've understood the assignment, right? I pray that I am not so healed that I'm out of touch with someone that might be hurting that I don't, I don't still be able to sense it. I don't, and I care and I have compassion. Listen, I'm the type of friend, I don't give a damn how many times we got to go through. If it's a hundred times, we're going to go through a friend. We went through this already, friend. We did, you know what I mean? We, I know we not, right, but let, okay. I'm, I'm that friend. And I said, I'm going, I'm going to be for me, for other people, what I would need for other people, right? Because strong people need something different. We do. We need something different. Um, and it don't take much. We don't need you to come over, cook home, cook meals, and do all this stuff. But a phone call that you really care, not because you being nosy, not because you want to go and talk about it, not that. I'm talking about somebody that really cares for you. Do not underestimate the power of how are you. Hey, Layla. Leia, Carter. So don't underestimate that, y'all. Don't underestimate that. And even, I don't care what is being thrown at us. I don't care what's being thrown at us. Be consistent, right? I, I There was a couple of weeks here that I just could not. 
be on live, right? I just, it, there was no way. Um, But I said, I'm going to sit in my car. I don't have no lashes on. My eye, I ain't got no concealer under my eyes. I'm not cute, nothing. But it's in the act of consistency, right? It's in our discipline. It, it's that, that, that our goals and our dreams is in our grasp and it's in our reach. How can I continue to, to just put this back and put this back because everything is being thrown at me at one time? I've got to take out the time, right? To just do what God told me to do. Speak on the platform that God gave me to speak. Maybe I'm not the only one going through this. Maybe I'm not the only one that is listening here saying, okay, God, you told me this, 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 and this, but all of this stuff is like being thrown at me, like thrown at me. <laughs> I want to quit. But it's just a pivot. What we know about pivots is that it's like, it's a turn and it's quick, right? The quick turn and the quick turn and the pivot. And then, and then it can, it can lead you back on track or it can lead you off veering off. That's up to us. It's a powerful thing knowing who you are, but it's also a lonely thing knowing who you are. And then I question like, am I wanting pity? Do I want, what is it that I'm struggling with? Dante, you helped me so much because now I'm all in my feelings because you made me uh, be present and in the moment. Thank you, Dante. Y'all see Dante right here? They, hey, Constance, it's a lonely thing. Constance, um, Dante, y'all hit him up if y'all need some life coaching because he got me together. But I'm present in the moment and I have just been so emotional because I feel so alone. And even though people are around me, people are not around me. You know? So then what do I do? How do I pivot? Man, this is pivot without quitting. Knowing who you are, right? Recognizing who you are, embracing who you are, and then being who you are, that be, that becoming who you are. It means that you have to deal with all of the old stuff, all of the past, all the trauma, all the triggers. You got to deal with all of that. To come out like where God wants you to be. And I don't, I'm not a crybaby. I'm not, I don't cry at night. You know, I'm not a crybaby. I wish I was. People probably take me more serious if I was crying versus being aloof. I'm kind of aloof. I'm not real, especially like if I'm going through something, uh, I'm not very emotional about it. Um, and that's just because of trauma, but. I'm so triggered and I'm so freaking mad because I feel invaded. I feel misunderstood again. And then I'm blaming myself because that's what people that, you know, uh, experienced abuse and trauma. That's what we do. We, Blame ourselves first, right? So I'm blaming myself for all this stuff. There is freedom in tears. The triggers can't hold you hostage when you address them. So um, I'm triggered. And what's triggered is anger. I am mad as hell. And the old me wants to react. The me I'm becoming has to respond. And I'm mad that I have to respond and I can't react. I'm not 
crying because I'm sad. I'm crying because I'm present. So I can wipe my own tears because I'm good. I'm just mad. And I'm always mad, right? I'm always upset. And we know that anger is a secondary emotion, right? Um, and my response isn't what it usually would be. I just walk away. I just walk away. And it hurts me to walk away because I want to say, I know the, I know you, who the, you think I am? What kind of, you think I am? What kind of punk ass you think I am? Oh, so you gonna play me like I'm stupid. Oh, so, and I can't do none of that. So I just sit there looking stupid because everything in my mind, <laughs> everything in my mind is not <laughs> what I'm supposed to say, right? Everything is the old me reacting. So I'm just like, okay, cool, all right. When I'm slowly stewing on the inside, I'm boiling on the inside. I'm angry. I'm pissed off. I'm mad. I'm frustrated. And I have to recreate my safe space again. I have to recreate. So I, you know, I have to do the work, right? to recreate my safe space again. And I'm constantly doing that because I'm constantly allowing myself to get in a situation where my peace is disturbed in order for me to go back and have to change my peace and get myself together, right? So this time I understand, and it took me a bunch of times to understand so many things, y'all. Like, I wish I could sit here and tell y'all, like, Everything. I, I'm happy though. Don't get me wrong. Like on the inside, my heart is just overjoyed at what God did in, in my life. So suddenly he, you know, I got keys to my place. I'm able to move. Um, and I'm able to celebrate in my home. You know, I can cook, I can do things in, you know, now that I haven't been able to. So Constance, you feel me? So I'm, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful, y'all, because God is so faithful. Even in the midst of whatever I'm feeling in my humanity, God is faithful. And sometimes we can't see his hand, but we can trace it. We know his presence. We know where he's at. We know what he's doing. And I can see God's hand on my life. I can see it. I can see it. God is more faithful than I would ever be. I couldn't, I couldn't be faithful. He's more when he said he's a friend to the friendless, a mother to the motherless. I'm talking about he is. My mom is my best friend. My mom is rotted our souls, just for real. For real. My mom. I am 46 and we spent most of my life not understanding each other. But that is my ride or die. My mama is a rider for her children. And she will take up for us when we are wronger than two left shoes and then come back and we get in trouble behind closed doors. <laughs> but in public, mama be taking up for her kids like nothing. Like she like, well, you shouldn't have did it. Well, if she did it, then you shouldn't have did whatever to her. You know, my mom is ride or die, man. And I couldn't like, like, it's just like, I can see God's hand. Like, I can see it. I can see it. 
and I'm so grateful. And then I can see Satan and I can see what he's doing. And I just want to push him down. Can I just say that? I just want to push him down. I just go, God, dog, you're good at what you do. And we let you, we just lend ourselves over to him. Like, oh, okay, you want to use me today? Okay, cool. Let's go. We don't even say, you know what? That is not that is not proper. I shouldn't move like this. You know what I mean? Like, I shouldn't come over and lie on this person. Or I shouldn't do whatever, whatever your character issues are, whatever your character flaws are. Oh, I, I shouldn't do that. We don't do that. No, let the devil use me today. I'm choosing violence. I'm choosing violence. Like, I, I want, I think we should check our character. Like, why? Like, I was telling my pastor one day, we were talking, and I said, I think when, when we post, make, make posts, right? Like, Facebook posts or whatever. I'm like, and we, like, saying something, I think we should ask ourselves, why? What, what am I getting from this? What do I want to see if I say this? If I talk about church heard of the church or if I talk about my mama or throw shots at a friend or whatever like what am I trying to get out of this right and I think if we become more introspective then we can change be the change that we want to see and that's what it's hard y'all like for those of y'all like working on stuff and trying to change like this trying to be better Nigga, it's, it's easier to choose violence. But listen, so easy. Like, listen, it's easier. <laughs> choose violence. If you want to be challenged and feel bad and go home and cry because you want to bust somebody in the face or you want to cut somebody out or you want to turn the tables over and you just have to sit there and focus. Um, yeah, then, then go, uh, go through this. I know I'm coming out better on the other side, no doubt. No doubt. God is just, he's shown, I mean, tremendous, okay, favor. I, I don't remember a time in my life, but my yes stuck, okay? So I, I'm yes, and I don't, I don't care. I'm riding. I'm riding with God, right? I'm riding with him. He riding with me. We doing this. This is what we doing. But it is so hard, though. It is so hard. It's so hard to choose not to choose violence. It's so hard, y'all. It's so hard when you're used to being able to speak your mind and say something and it's just the most ignorant thing and then you have to sit there. Thank you. You have to sit there. And, you know, my inner self is always saying, I ain't no punk. I ain't no punk. I ain't no punk. I ain't no punk. I this lady tried to fight me, y'all, about a month ago. Today, actually, a month ago today, at the laundromat, I was doing laundry, and the lady tried to start mess with me, y'all. I wanted to assault her because that's what the police would have called it, assault. I had so much at that time. I was at the peak of everything that was happening and it was at a boil and it was about to overboil and here you come. And the Holy Spirit that rose up in me was so amazing. I was in awe of myself, okay? I was outside of myself like, so we not gonna whoop her? Oh my. Okay, so you, and I told her, lady, let me tell you something. I'm not gonna fight you. Because I got too much to lose. I'm not going to do that. No. Nope. You're going to get me out of my character to fight me. Then I went in the car and I cried. Like a baby. Because the I call it Nikki. That's my ego, my id, like uh, Freud say. My enemy, Nikki wants to fight. That's her favorite response tab some stuff, fight, stab somebody, come on, let's, let, let's go, right, but my, I'm not, I cannot, we are not going to do anything violent to anyone, we're going to walk away, 
and we'll cry about it and we'll write it out, whatever. But we cannot because what is it proven? What does it solve? Nothing. 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 I don't need to curse nobody out. If I don't want to deal with them, I just don't deal with them. It's my life. I do what I want to do. Kind of. Sort of. I've been venting to y'all for 40 minutes. Thank you for those that rode with me. I hope I helped you. I hope I did. I hope me being raw and transparent helped you. Don't quit. Don't let the pivot make you quit. It's short lived, couple of months. And you can make a decision in the pivot that will change the trajectory of your life and that will could potentially derail you from what God has for you. Don't make no decisions in the pivot unless it's for self-preservation. I hear you, Holy Ghost. No decisions in the pivot. It's only a moment in the story. And it ain't even a paragraph. The pivot is like this, but it seems so long. It seemed like for and it's dragged on and on. When you get out of it, you're going to think that was four months. That was five months. That was just six months. And avoiding the pivot. Because I think there are, some of them are avoidable and some of them are lessons. They're lessons. Right? I think pivots are lessons and some are avoidable. It just depends on, you know, what they are. If they don't line up with the will of God, they are avoidable. They're avoidable. What's in your reach? See, the man said today, he said, God does not give you what you need in your hand. It's too easy. You have to reach out and grab it. So how do, what's in our reach? What capacity have we built for our reach? So we can reach out and grab what God is, is calling us, what God has given us, those things that we want to acquire, how we're going to acquire them, business ideas and inventions and all of the books and, and, and all these things that God has given us. Uh, what are we using our time for and what is in our reach and where is the foolishness? It's eliminating the foolishness, the chatter, the gossip, the this, the that. Eliminate that mess. It's in our reach. We have, and then we have to be disciplined in ourselves and be honest with ourselves. Like, why do we show up like to our job? Why? Yes, ma'am. Come on, Constance. Constance said the pivot doesn't change your position. It changes your, pers your perspective. I'm telling y'all. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad somebody got help today, y'all, because I'm telling y'all today in this, this last month, the kick my butt. Huh? I was in a room, a hotel room for four days. Before I went to my mom's, I mean, y'all, like, and the whole time I'm cool. I'm cooler than a cucumber. You hear me? Because I'm used to just going through it. But stuff hurts. It hurts to see my son you know, uh, feeling the way, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and me being his mom, y'all know how much I love him, Dwayne. And, uh, and then blaming myself for him feeling that way. Oh, Jesus, just all kinds of stuff. And then seeing different things happening, the way folk move and all this stuff. And I'm just like, y'all, my mind is blown. Do you hear me? Blown. And I'm like, Anjanette, what, what we gonna do? She's saying nothing. We ain't gonna do nothing. 
We ain't go. No. We're going to get, we're going to do what we, we're going to move. <laughs> we're going to pray when we get in this house. We're going to eat, we're going to cook, and we're going to live life. We're not giving no energy to BS. The pivot. All right, y'all. I've been talking 45 minutes. Thank you, thank you, thank you for everyone, 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 everyone. Thank you for watching. You guys have been amazing. You guys have been encouraging and you drive my tears. Y'all let me cry. Thank you. But I ain't no punk. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, tears are not a sign of weakness. They're a sign of strength. Tears are cleansing for the soul. Hey, Brother John. That's my brother from another mother. Tears are cleansing for the soul. Tears are for release. So we can cry. We can cry. Thank y'all for hanging with me. I'm going to go buy this book. There's a book called Outwitting the Devil. I'm going to go buy it. I love you, brother from another mother. And I'm going to um I'm going to see you guys later, okay? Okay, so next time we come next week, you know what I'm saying? We back on. But I thank y'all for letting me be trans 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 transparent cuz I'm not on today. I don't have my game face on today. Because I got, I, I have some hard decisions to make. <laughs> um, some things I need to move around and the pivot, right? All right, y'all. Listen, this has been another edition of Anjanette Speaks, the real, the raw, and the inspiring. Tune in next week, Saturday at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. We will be talking about, um, I think I'm going to do a first segment on suicide prevention and then I'm going to have somebody come on. I think we're going to try to get some folks on here. Try to get some hosts, okay? So your host, I'll be back next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for loving on me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. Leave comments below. Like, share. I hope there's something in this that um, inspired you today. Enjoy your Saturday.